Hello everybody and thanks for coming to God's Word again today. It's my real joy and always my privilege to come and bring you the Word of God. I am so nervous today about something. Can I be honest? I'm going to tell you a story and then I'm going to speak about this subject. God will take care of you. God's going to take care of you. Now before I tell you why I'm nervous, I've got two verses of scripture that I want to read from Psalm chapter 56. The Bible says in Psalm 56 verses 8 and 9, listen to this. Lord, you know my wanderings. You put all my tears into your bottle. Are they not also in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall my enemies turn back. And this I know. For God is for me. God is for me. God is for you today. Isn't that good news? Really good news. Now I'm going to tell you a story and then I'm going to tell you why I'm nervous. Because I'm going to do something that I have never done in any of these videos. Can you guess what I'm going to do? <laughs> you should be nervous. <laughs> I went to visit a precious dear saint this woman and she's in a nursing home and I went to visit her and as I, I was with her this week and as, as I was sharing with her and trying to read the Bible to her and try to comfort her as a pastor and this woman she just needed reassurance and I said these words to her God will take care of you and as soon as I said those words a hymn came into my head, that lovely hymn, God will take care of you. Do you know what I did? I sang it to her. I sang it to her. I sang the verse, verse and chorus. And I've never done this before in any YouTube video. I am an awful singer. I've never done this before. But I felt the urge to do this for you. And I pray that this will minister to you. It's not the right key. It's not the right tune probably. But I'm going to try and sing this to you. Be not dismayed. Whate'er betide. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide God will take care of you God will take care of you through every day ere all the way God will take care of you God will take care of you Through days of toil when heart does fail God will take care of you When dangers fierce your path assail God will take care of you God will take care of you through every day, ere all the way. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. <laughs> and so, I want you to know today that God will take care of you. Isn't that good news? Now this is a message of hope and this is a message that if you've been tested and put through a trial and you're worrying about so many different things, my God is for me. That's what the scriptures say. And I want to leave you this message of hope. And maybe you're a, a full-time carer. Am I talking to someone and you're a full-time carer? 
and you're caring for someone and it, it takes all your time and all your energy and all your resources and you give yourself so selflessly for another. When you take care of someone, that's beautiful. But I want you to know, carer, God will take care of you. And God will take care of the person that you're looking after. You see their pain. You see their deterioration. You, you know it's a loved one that's sick. Or maybe it's finances. And with domestic bills rising, God will take care of you. Maybe it's about your future. Maybe it's about growing older. Maybe you've lost your job and there's debts and money problems and struggling with children and you're worried about your, your children and you're saying to me, Johnny, I can't even pay the next mortgage bill that needs to come out. I'm, I'm here. God's brought me today to tell you that God will take care of you. Isn't that good news? God knows. Do you know, do you ever hear people saying, how are you doing? How are you keeping? It's just a common courtesy when you bump into somebody in the street and they ask, how are you keeping? People that love people, just it's a, just a common courtesy. How are you keeping? How are you keeping? And sometimes when we really say we're, we're doing okay, we're, we're, we're fine, do you really want to know my problems? Do you really want to know how I am today? And I find that when, whenever somebody does offload and when someone does share their heart on how they really, really feel, the truth is they don't want to know or they don't get it. People don't understand and people don't get it. But I'm here today to tell you that God loves you and God cares for you you. You see, people don't get it. People don't understand how you're feeling unless they have been through something similar. And when you speak to someone who's went through the same thing, they can say, I know how you feel in this. I've been there. I've walked in your shoes. I know what you're struggling with because I've been through that fire. I've been through that storm. I know what you're going through. But it's a rare thing that someone wants to really know how you feel. And that's a rare thing when somebody really gets it. And when you get a friend like that, that wants to, to share, transfer your, bless, your, your burden over to me. Give it to me. If you get a friend like that and they love you and they want to share your burden and they get your heart. If they're a confident, wow, that's such a gift from God. That is such a gift from God. Now, folks, when I'm going through a trial, when I'm going through a difficulty, please don't be offended what I'm about to say. I don't need some whippersnapper coming into my life and giving me scripture, scripture, scripture. Now, I need scriptures. Please, I'm not putting that down. But I need more than just someone just flippantly throwing scriptures at me. I need someone that's been through it. I need someone that knows what I'm feeling. Give me someone that's walked in my shoes. And when they give me scripture, I will receive it. I don't need some young Christian coming over to me and trying to put their hands on me to cast the devil out of me. No, I need someone that's been through it. And that's why God's using me. To help so many people in mental health. Because I've been through it. I've, I've been through that journey. I've seen the darkness. That it's so dark it can be felt. I've experienced that pain. I've walked in their shoes. And I understand what it's like. It's a lonely path. And even though you could be surrounded by people. You struggle. Anxiety. Panic attacks. Depression. Fear. Sometimes I'm a clean person. I get maybe at least one or two showers every day. I'm a clean person. But in that moment in my life, I couldn't even touch my, my face. Didn't even want to wash my teeth. Had no motivation for anything. 
I want to tell you, God sent me today to help you to get up again and to listen to the word of God because I strongly believe that you've got to get this revelation because you're doubting, does God even see this? Does God even know what I'm going through? Does God even care? God doesn't care, Johnny. Look at all the things I'm going through. He does care. God sent me to tell you that God will take care of you. I've been through the fire. I've been through the struggle. I know what it's like to sleep on a park bench. I know what it's like to be homeless. I know what it's like when my mind breaks and I've got nothing to live for. I've been there, folks. I understand what you're going through. But I've got out the other end and I'm a living testimony to tell people that there's a better way. Run to the Lord. Get your mind fixed on God. Worship him in the midst of the storm. And that is something that you need to learn to do. I know what sleepless nights are like. I know what it's like for my, my feet to dangle over the side of the bed and I'm crying with my head and my hands at night and I'm crying to God, Lord, I'm hurting really badly, Lord. I need your help. I know what it's like to be there, to lose family or feel estranged to chill your children or to, to come from a broken home. I, I, I've been through this, folks, and I understand how you feel God sent me today to tell you he will take care of you. He's a covenant keeping God. He's a God that keeps his word. He's a God that sits on his throne, but he's approachable. We, we have access into his presence. God will take care of you. Oh, the healing power in those words. God will take care of you. God, what do you know about suffering? Jesus on the cross. God knew the suffering of his own son on the cross. And if he knows what it's like to see his own son suffer, God knows what it's like for you to suffer. Where are you, God, in this? Where are you, God, in this? What are you doing, God, in this? Why are you not hearing me, the pain, the sickness, the affliction, and we keep questioning and, and the suffering continues and the doubts keep coming back. God must not care or there must be some sin in my life. This pain is unbearable. I don't see God moving. I don't see the evidence of God moving and, and the answer isn't coming. I'm at the end of my rope and we have two options. Two options when we're at the end of our rope. Listen to me carefully. Number one, we turn to the Lord and to his word and we trust him. Or number two, we charge God with fatherly negligence. You've abandoned me, God. You've left me when I've needed you most. And we begin to doubt and after all these years of me being faithful, Lord, you have left me. Please don't charge God with fatherly negligence. He has never rejected you. He's never neglected you. He's never turned his back on you. That is not the God that I serve. Well, Johnny, why am I suffering? The first question that we usually ask when we're going through suffering, it must be me. What have I done wrong? It must be sin in my life. Folks, if you've repented of every sin, I want to tell you something. Everything in my past is under the blood of Jesus Christ. So it cannot be that because there's now no condemnation, zero condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Now, what about this? Do you know that if you're godly, you will never suffer persecution? <laughs> is that right or wrong? If you live a godly life, you will never suffer persecution. Is that right or wrong? Of course it's wrong. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, and all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Now look at me. Look at me carefully. 
We think we've done evil. We think we've, we're being persecuted because there's sin. But it's, it's not like that. Unless you need to repent of sin, God knows. God will take care of you. Everything about you, he knows. He, 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 he gets the pain you're going through. And there's three stories that I want to give you today. Three stories from the Bible and each story will prove to us beyond a doubt that God will take care of you. The first story is the story of Noah in the ark. We know this story, don't we? Noah in the ark. Most commentators believe that there was over a million different insects in that ark. Some commentators believe there was more than that. But you're, you're talking, the Bible says the, the clean animals went in seven by seven and the unclean two by two of every kind, every species. Could you imagine up to a million insects in the ark? They also believe, experts believe that there are up to 72,000 different varieties and different species of animals in the ark. Now it ran 40 days and 40 nights. Noah was in the ark for a year before the waters subside. And, and can you imagine that? A million insects, 72,000 animals and eight humans for one year in an ark. Going through a storm that has never been seen ever. And you're thinking, will God keep me? Yes, God took care of them. And if God can look after a million insects and 72,000 animals and eight people in a boat that's going through the worst storm that's ever been seen in this world for up to a year, if God can do that, God's going to take care of you. God will take care of you. The second story is about Israel. Israel, God chose Israel to be a people on himself. They weren't the strongest. They weren't the most spiritual. They weren't the, the cleverest. They weren't the, the largest. They weren't the wealthiest. God told them, I'm going to lead you into a wilderness. I'm going to lead you into this desert. And there's going to be hardships, but you're going to get to the promised land, but you've got to go through the hardships. God brought these people out of Egypt. God brought them out of the wilderness. He brought them out of their troubles. And when he brought them out, they became a teaching nation. They, they, they teach all the nations of the world. They, they become a testimony to the power of God that we came through this wilderness and we get out the other side to tell you that God has taken care of us. For 40 years, they wandered the wilderness. For 40 years, their shoes didn't wear out. For 40 years, their clothes didn't wear out. They were a testimony that God is still the God that provides. He's still the God that brings you out of the wilderness. And he is the God that will never let one person starve. You see, we don't read that in scripture anywhere, that one person died of starvation. No, none of them, not one person out of that one and a half million people in, in, in Israel, not one of them starved. They didn't do without food. They weren't homeless. In fact, the Bible says when God brought them out of Egypt, there wasn't one sick one among them. God took care of them. There's not one of you today that hasn't got food on your table. God has been good. God has protected you. He's preserved you. He's looked after you and given you every blessing. He's brought you through hard times, hasn't he? He's brought you through sickness. God's brought you through some trials. And when you get out the other end, you've got to be a teaching nation. You've got to be able to say to people, I'm a living testimony of the power and the keeping power of God and so I say to you this morning that when I'm preaching this word that you will receive it from God because when God brings you out you have to stand in the other side of the Red Sea and you've got to declare the faithfulness of God 
that he has taken care of me. And because of that, look back in your past. God has done that for you. He will not leave you abandoned now. The Bible says in Psalm 145 verse 18, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, and to all that call upon him in truth. Listen, the Lord is nigh unto you. The Lord is close to you right now. The Lord is so near to you. And as you're listening in online, do you feel the presence of the Lord? Do you feel the closeness that the Bible says that the Lord is nigh unto you? The Lord is near unto them that are, that are broken on a contrite heart. God, you will not despise. You're broken. Do you know right now that God is so close to you? Do you feel the Spirit upon you? He's a good God. He's going to bring you through. And when he brings you through and out the other end, like the children of Israel, trusting him in a storm, trusting him in the boat, that he's still going to provide, that he's still going to care for me through the worst storm that's ever been seen in this world. God still cared for the animals and God still cared for the insects. He's going to care for you, my brother. He's going to care for you. Jesus said, are you not more of greater value than the sparrows? Look at the sparrows. They're not worried about tomorrow. God's going to provide for them. The lilies of the field, they toil and they spin. Are you not much more value than of them? God is faithful and I can testify what God has brought me through. He's a faithful covenant keeping God. The God that I serve is the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. He is the faithful God, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And I declare over your life today, God still cares for you. He still cares for you. Have you ever had someone say to you, I'll take care of this and they let you down? Or I'll take care of you and they break... Pardon me, they break their promise. God doesn't break his promise. We read in Numbers chapter 29 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? I love that. God has spoken over your life. Will he not make it good? He's going to make it good. Believe in him. Johnny, I really don't know that God will take care of me. The Bible says he sends angels to watch over you. Psalm 91 verse 11. He will give his angels charge over thee to keep you in all your ways. The Holy Spirit is present inside you. He will take care of you. Jesus is praying for you. He will take care of you. Now, we read in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. See that word casting? It's the Greek word that means to throw a weight onto a donkey. A domesticated beast, a colt or an animal of some sort. It gives the illustration of a weary traveller and he's got baggage around him and luggage and weights and he's got cloaks around him and blankets around him. And when he comes to the domesticated animal, he takes the, the weight off him. He takes the luggage and the baggage off him and he throws it onto the donkey. The only other time that this word, this Greek word is mentioned is in Luke chapter 19 verse 35 where it says they cast their garment onto the donkey. That's the illustration. Casting, taking off what's on you and casting it onto the Lord the way a traveller casts it upon a donkey. Your shoulders are not meant to carry this strain. 
This burden is too much for you. You've got to take it off and cast it onto the Lord. Put it over him. God says, fling it on my back. Let me carry it for you. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God says, give me your burdens and cares and fling them onto me. Let me carry them. Let me look after you. Let me put my spirit upon you. And why should I do this? Why should I take off my strains and struggles and burdens and cares and give them to the Lord? Because the Bible says he cares. He cares for you. See where it says God cares for you? It is the Greek word, listen, God is concerned about you. God is thoughtful about you. God is highly interested about you. God is aware about you. He takes notice of you. And I love this. God gives meticulous attention to all of your cares. Another translation reads, give your cares to God because you are all that matters to him. So if God can look after a million insects and 72,000 animals and eight people in a boat for a year, God's going to take care of you. If God can take after, take uh, if God can take care of a million and a half people going through a wilderness for 40 years and providing for them every day, God's going to take care of you. The third story is in the Old Testament. It's a story about Naomi and Ruth. In the book of Ruth, the Bible says that there was a famine. There was a famine in the land and they lost everything. They go back to Naomi's homeland. It was Hebrew custom and Hebrew law. And the law said, Moses said this, in a famine, if people are poor and they don't have anything to eat, they have the right to go into the fields. And the farmer of those fields were not allowed to reap into the corners of those fields. They were to be left for the poor. Isn't the heart of God amazing? The poor were allowed to go into the fields of the farmer and they were allowed to scrap up the leftovers, the produce that was left behind in the corners of the field. Now, try and understand this custom, please, before I go any further. When the reapers were reaping the harvest, if anything dropped to the ground, the poor could have it. So if I was a harvester and I was a reaper and I was pulling down apples from the tree, if I accidentally dropped an apple on the tree, the law said you were not allowed to pick it up. You were to leave that to the poor, and the fatherless and the widows and the orphans. And if it was on the ground, they had every right to go in and pick it up and eat it. Ruth went into the field that day for leftovers. She was going in to reap the scraps that the law could give her, the hand-me-downs, if you like. Now, she was a Gentile, you've got to understand this. She was not a Hebrew. She was a foreigner. She was a foreigner. She... She did not deserve the benefits of the law. Yet God intended her to have it. Do you know what I'm thinking about when I think about that? She was a foreigner in a different country on government benefits and the Lord wanted her to have it. <laughs> Christians are so hard when it comes to foreigners, when it comes to people from different nationalities, they're in our country, they're taking our jobs, they're taking our benefits, they're taking our homes. Stop it! Stop it! The Lord intended Ruth to have it. She was a foreigner. She was a Gentile in a Jewish law custom, but she got the benefits of the law. And God intended her to have it. We are to embrace people from different nationalities and we are to embrace them and love them. That's what Boaz did and that's the heart of God. Now, we're still in our story. Now, she had no 
business being there in that field she shouldn't have been there really to get the blessing but here she is this poor girl no food in the field of Boaz on her knees and she's trying to gather a little here and a little there maybe just a, a little stalk of a cabbage or maybe some vegetables or fruit or just a little now maybe at the end of the day she had enough maybe food just about for her and Naomi this is hard work I want you to understand this the reason it was so hard for her just to get enough food to get by because the Bible says the reapers were sure-handed sure-handed when Boaz hired these reapers he wanted them to be sure-handed in other words they were professional reapers they had it down to a fine art. These harvest workers knew that if they dropped something on the ground, some old peasant is going to get that apple. So they were sure-handed. They were good. They were professionals. They did not let anything fall to the ground. The Bible says they were sure-handed. They were careful not to waste or drop any food. Now the workers of Boaz would not let anything fall to the ground they were sure i'm not dropping anything but then the story changes boaz comes to his field and he sees this gorgeous beautiful woman she's so pretty and here she is she's on her hands and knees and she's picking up these little bits of scrap food here and there just enough to get by little scraps and Ruth seen these harvest workers and they were sure handed. They, they weren't going to do anything. And, and, and Boaz went over to his workers and he said this. Drop handfuls on purpose for her. They were sure handed. They wouldn't let anything do. Boaz, you hire us that we don't drop anything under the ground. And now, this is crazy. You're asking us to drop handfuls on, on purpose around this woman. Yes, that's what I want you to do. She's a foreigner. Boaz, you've lost her, mate. No, drop handfuls of purpose. Around. Get butterfingers around her. Drop it on purpose. Ruth didn't know what was going on. But as she went into those fields, she had sacks full of provision. And God provided for her. Boaz, it just looked like an accident. It was just left. It was falling on the ground. No longer is it just a little bit of here and there. And that's the God that I serve. He doesn't just give you a little scrap here and there. He's a God that has provided bountifully he's a god that forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases and crowns your life with loving kindness bless the lord O oh my soul and forget not all his benefits he's a good god we're blessed he's overloaded us with blessings they're dropped left and right god is taking care of me hallelujah so that's what I want to speak on today. We're blessed. Here's how I'm finishing. Jesus Christ is all right throughout the Bible. He will take care of you. Jesus is Adam's creator. He is Eve's promised seed. He is Noah's ark, Abraham's sacrifice. He's Isaac's substitute. He's Jacob's wrestler. He's Moses' staff. He's Aaron's rod that budded. He's Samson's strength and David's slingshot. He's Deborah's song. He's Solomon's wisdom. He's Elijah's mantle. He's Elisha's double portion. He's Isaiah's servant. He's Jeremiah's righteous branch. Do you understand? He's going to take care of you. He's Ezekiel's man of fire. He's Daniel's ancient of days. He will take care of you. He's Hosea's faithful husband. He's Joel's restorer of the years. 
He's Malachi's day star from on high. He's Matthew's Messiah. He's Mark's miracle worker. He's Luke's son of man. He's John's son of God. He's Peter's rock in the kingdom. And he's Paul's potter. And in Revelation, he is the one that is dead. And he's now alive. And he's alive forevermore. And he holds the keys of death and hell. And my God is the God that will take care of you. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through every pain, there all the way, God will take care of you. God will take care of you that's the last time i'm ever gonna sing <laughs> on youtube <laughs> here's the last thing i'm saying listen to this jesus is above all jesus is above everything so you can't lift them higher jesus is beneath everything so you can't pull them down jesus is inside everything so you can't lock them out. And Jesus is outside everything, so you can't put them out. I want to tell you, we are so blessed of God. And today, be encouraged. God loves you. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. And I pray that you will understand this today. If he's looking after all those insects and animals in the ark, he's looking after you. If he can bring a million and a half people right through a wilderness for 40 years, he's going to take care of you. If God can take a woman, a, a, a foreigner in a new country and outside of government blessings and all of those things, God will still take care of you. So be encouraged today. I love you in Jesus' name. And may God help you today to experience the blessing of God. Share the video. Get the word of God out to people and let them know today that whatever situation you face, God will take care of you. Let me pray. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that the people will know beyond a doubt you're in control and you're taking care of me. Bless, Lord, the people as they listen. Encourage them in their walk with God. Fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now give them, Lord, strength to go on. Bless, we pray. Pour out your spirit, we pray. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Thanks for listening. Leave a comment. And we love you. If you need prayer, write to us. Mourn Gospel Fellowship. And please make contact. I want to help you with your mental health and pray for you in confidence. Make contact with us. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.